Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, guys. Daisy Wynn. Hello. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about a couple of things. Um, primarily, Stacy's Tea Shop. Mm-hmm. Well, I shouldn't say primarily. That's actually, actually secondary. That's what we're going to start off with. Right. Yeah, we're going to start off with your Tea Shop. But it's going to lead us into the um, tribulation, apocalypse, great awakening, rapture. Yeah, because I have a few of, questions. Yeah, you had questions this morning, right? Yeah, yeah, some questions that you need to get straight because right. I don't know if... Yeah. yeah. We, you need to get them straight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, before before we do now, so you guys, this, this, this video is going to be in several parts. So, you know, you guys... Um, you can help me out if you want to suggest um, um, chapters down in the uh, comment section. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Yeah. You want to lead a prayer or you want me to lead it? Uh -huh. I'm going to let you lead it. Why? You know the person who says the prayer actually does his prayer don't count. You know that, right? Where is it? Really? Well, you're saying it out loud. You know, out loud verbal prayers don't count. Do we need to say it out loud? No, I'm saying it's, well, no. Well, the people go. They can just hold on while they want to hear our. Prayer oh, too. okay. So they want to hear. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and say it. But you know. Well, well no, I said since it. you're the leader of the house, we're gonna let me say it. No, so your no, prayer no, 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 no. I know how to pray twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abu, today we come to you today asking that you allow this video to both uplift your name, your kingdom, your word, as well as shine light on your provisions that you have provided for us down here as far as how you expect us to be uh, taken care of in these end times. Right. And your son's name, in your son's name we pray, amen? Yes, amen. And so be it. Mm-hmm. And so the first thing that popped in my head again, and I'm going to say it was divine and popping, was dreams. You had a dream you wanted to tell me this morning. I stopped you. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a very short dream, so it's only maybe 30 seconds or less. Hold on. Wait. Dream time! Okay, no, nobody else around. Okay, go ahead. Okay, what happened when, in the dream was I was crossing a bridge, me and a couple of other people and I want to say it was ladies now the first person that was directly behind me was uh, a Caucasian sister and there were other people behind her I do not believe we were, were in vehicles I believe we were walking I believe we were crawling uh, we were down low and as I was trying to cross the bridge was, which were, was very narrow there were things in front so that I was unable to go to fully cross the bridge, I would have to go on the left side of the bridge because on the right side of the bridge had things that were was in the walkway like books and other things. And so I had to scoop some of the stuff over so that I could cross, I could walk. Oh. Mom. That sounds like uh, what is that thing called? Oh, An alert. Amber alert. Yeah, amber alert. Yeah. Uh, tornado. Uh, Alrighty. Tornado. Um, hmm. We got somebody on the line. Say our prayers for him. Okay. So you were blocked on the right side by books and accelerator. Okay. Okay. And so I had to scoot over the books so that I could cross, me and the others could cross the bridge. And um, I was fearful of scooting stuff over. No, I was fearful of actually crossing that little passageway that we had to cross over because it seems as if it was like maybe about seven or eight inches wide. And I don't know what happened, but I do know I made it cross. And that was the end of the dream. Hmm. Yeah. Did it? Okay. Did anybody else make it across? I don't know. I don't remember. 
but I do know I Ooh. made it across. I okay. don't remember about anybody else making it across. Um, but who was the other people with you, you say? Um, I believe it was ladies. I know the lady that was directly behind me was a female. The person that was directly behind me was a female. Um, I believe she was a Caucasian. Um, so you were in a line, of course, because yes. it, it was seven inches. So was it straight, really narrow, straight? Yes. Um, and it across the bridge. It was a bridge, yes. Okay. Sort of like that bridge over in Repton Crossing from um, Sam's to the post office, uh, that bridge. Why did you have to um, walk? Why did you have to crawl, you say? I don't know. It just seemed like I will, we were down low. I don't know if we got down on our hands and knees to try to inch over that little passageway, but, but I believe we were down low on our hands and knees. But you were crawling over books, you say? I was crawling around. You had to go around the books? Around the books, yes. Did you touch the books or the books were in the way of a step yeah. on any books? Yeah, I had to move them. Okay. Now... Talk more about the books. What else you can tell me about the I books? I can't tell you anything about it. You I had to move wondering. the books out of the way. Right. Okay. It was books and now other how did you things. move them out of the way? Just grab this. My hands. Just, I mean. Yes. Just move. Pushing them out of the way like you would snow. Yeah. Or... Just carefully move them to the side. Okay. I mean, but it ain't so much as being careful. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing, but did you look at the book? Like, did you examine the book? Did you no. see the name of the book? Okay. No, the books were, there were books on top of each other, like stacks of books. Mm -hmm. So I pushed them fearfully. I was scared to put, I would push them over to the side. And there were so many books. Say, for instance, the bridge was 12 feet long, right? Mm -hmm. The books took up 11 feet of it, 12 mm -hmm. feet wide. The, book the books took up 11 feet of them. And so we had just one feet to walk. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Yeah. So but how tall were these stacks of books? Not very tall. Maybe uh, seven or eight inches. Okay. So down by your ankles, down by your knees. Yeah, but we were down low as well. And you just had to walk, just walk around them and do them and stuff. Yeah, but okay. we were down. Remember, we were down low. So you had to crawl through the books. Crawl around them. Okay. But yeah, anyway, so you, um, and then once you got through the books or around the books, you say, then you was free. I remember I crossed over, I crossed to the other side. So once you got through the books, then you crossed over. Can you describe like that crossing over? Can you, okay, you finished, yeah. okay, your books, the last book and then what happens? No, I don't remember. I just remember that I made it across. I remember I made it across. The bridge. Right. I made it to the other side. Oh, the bridge. And the bridge right. was just books. Books. Narrow path with books. And you made it to the other side. No, and I can't say it was just books. It was other stuff, but I can't remember exactly okay. what other it stuff was. And books. Okay. Right. And, okay. You was fit. You were scared for it. And then that's what drove you through him. That's what made you. He was running from something. Something was like chasing you. Mm -mm. Why was you scared? You were scared of the books? What was you I fearful? Was scared. I was fearful of that little small passageway that we had to walk. Well, through. why did you have to go over the bridge? I don't know. Why was you so you were just in a line of people going over yes. a bridge? Yes. Okay. That's when it started. You and a Caucasian lady. Yes, I was in front, and they were behind me. Mm, okay. I think I was the main person. Okay. I don't know. I had a sense that I was the main person. They were waiting behind me to cross over. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think that's going to be it. The last thing I had was uh, that it was seven inches wide. Really, really, really narrow. Very narrow. Like a, that's like a... Um, that's what was I was so fearful of. The, the narrowness. The narrowness of this Yeah, because bridge. I didn't want to fall off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you made it. All right. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and uh, close that one. Um, so, anything else on this one? Because we're going. This is going to be a standalone video. Um, First of all, you guys can comment on what you think the got the dream means down in the comment section. I'm gonna get yeah. out of the business of interpreting dreams, but let's the father tell me to. Right. Um. Yeah, I would love to see what other people have to say about it. I really don't have. This is maybe one of my 
first dreams that I haven't had a thought about what it what could mean? possibly mean. I don't know. I really don't know. All right. That's very good. That's very good. All right. So we'll leave it to the comment section then. Well, I was really interested in your dream because it immediately reminded me of another dream. Oh, okay. One that you had? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, you want to talk about your tea company? Um, yeah. Because that's um, going to get us off completely. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, we started this tea company um, a few months ago. And it started as being able to serve the body. Um, it's one of the things that I've wanted to do. Um, I think you said you remember me having a dream where I was given, you know, let first let me say I'm my memory is not great. Mm -hmm. But you said that you remember me having some kind of dream where the father had given me uh, instructions, mission, I don't know, to to work with herbs. It's something Yeah, you don't remember that dream? I do not. Really? Well, uh -huh. maybe you wanna play it? Uh sure, we could play it or do a card. Um it's up to you. Oh it, it, well you gotta hear how you gonna you know, you gotta know what you're talking about, <laughs> Ain't that kind of important? I'm surprised you didn't show a better page than that. That's just a, you keep showing a picture of these weeds. People don't really want to see weeds. They don't, people, not on my channel. Ain't nobody on my channel interested in the weeds. We want to see words and stuff that we can read. We want to be educated, not entertained. But that's your, you know, I don't know now. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I think you got a wrong idea about women. You talk about men. men well, men. well, for that reason, I know it's supposed to be words now. We want to be, we want to see something more sophisticated than that. We don't want to see pictures of, um, I'm thinking about a picture of something like a picture, like a picture of a bouquet of flowers. That ain't that ain't interesting. No, nobody. That this ain't that kind of channel. This ain't that kind of video. You gotta come up with something better than that. We've been talking about um, stuff that um, 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 they can be educated by. You gonna if you are gonna have a herb, it's gonna it's, forget about the picture. That's what the name of the herb but is. Those, what the I Greek name actually is. Go through it. People don't look. None about Kevin. No Greek. Yeah, yeah we that we do. That's what we want to. On this channel, that's what we do. We, we want to hear about the Greek name of it. We want to hear out, oh, Stacy. This ain't okay. You you want to put this on you, your channel? Or my channel? Wanna, I'm telling you, people do not care you, about no Greek name care. of no herb. Uh, that's uh, ridiculous. You don't care. Name you one Greek name of a herb. Not. I'm just saying, name one Greek name of a herb. That's because you don't know what nobody else do. Neither do they care. You just want to know it's red clover, and it can do so and so and so. I bet, I bet there's somebody who cares what the Greek name is. I know there's somebody, but I'm just saying, do we can't, you can't name one Greek name. Of a word, I can't name it but one, and that's why I let us. All right, so let's click on this and see what it's saying. All right, so we got to make sure the images are turned off. Then we're gonna come in here and we want to see 13 minutes. All right, so I had a dream last night, a couple of dreams last night. Let's see if I can remember them. Dream time. Dream time. All right, so <clears throat> me and your mom was visiting, I believe it was Washington, D.C. And we were sit seeing the sites of something, it was like a Barack Obama museum or something there in the middle of the water in, in D.C. And nobody really liked this museum because they said it was it was overdone, like it was, uh, okay, like it was, uh, like it was like too much, too much to do, I can't think of the word to use, but it's like the, the museum lit up and it had this big light show and people just like this museum because of all these lights and it's like it's out there like it outshines all the other buildings and they they was they was upset because of that anyway we was out on a raft in this water uh go, like going around the building and looking at it we didn't really go in there or anything and then we uh left but we, we walked up on the shore um and we had we was, like i said we was on a raft we were in kind of a swimsuit kind of thing i guess i don't remember how it was a swimsuit but we we were on a raft and we were in water 
And so when we walked up on the shore, we got our raft, and we got our stuff, and we started walking off. Your mom was leading the way. But I noticed that people were looking at us. You know, I thought they were looking at us because we were fit or because we were pretty or whatever. And I noticed all these people that were sitting on these, like, lawn chairs were, were looking. They stopped and they started looking at us as we were walking around. Your mom didn't, see, didn't pay any attention. And I was trying not to look. I was looking down. But I was like, dang, we must be interesting to these people. But anyway, I'm following your mom as we're going toward this, this building. Now, this big old building, your mom went to the first door, and it was locked. She, she um, didn't, you know, wasn't able to get into this door, and then she, uh, one of us noticed that there was a, another door right beside it, like an elevator. So we went over to the elevator, and we got on the elevator, and there was two guys already on the elevator, and they were just kind of standing there in the elevator. And when we got in, the door was kind of shut, and then one of them said, oh, well, what floor are y'all going to? Like, they didn't push the button. And, and so when we got on, they said, what floor are you going to? But there wasn't any choice. There was, uh, there was number three or down. You could go to the third floor or you could go down. And I looked down, and the guy pushed the button. He pushed three, and it was the only, the only um, button there was number three. So apparently we went up to the third floor. So we got to the third floor, and in the third floor of this building, it's like a big school, big, um, it's like a hospital school, office building kind of environment where you got this, this big old desk, this high desk with people behind it, take care of all of this business, and you got the people in front, kind of like the, um, where you get a license from, down there in, in, in Monroe, where you got this little small area where all the uh, patrons are standing, and you got the area back there where all the workers these are with their computers and all of that, and we're standing there kind of waiting in line. There's a, there's a really tight area, and there's a lot of people in this area, and we're kind of waiting to get our, get our turn up there. And this one guy walks through, he's a short African-American. All the people in this dream are African-Americans. It's, well, until later on, we see some, some uh, Caucasians later on, we'll get to that. But there, there, um, this one dude, he's kind of he's kind of short, kind of skinny, and he walks by, and he starts talking about scholarships. He doesn't say, if you want a scholarship, come with me, or anything like that. He kind of says something like, uh, uh, scholarships are for the uh, best people. He just says something in code, because the people who are there, is like, they go, wait, he's talking to me. And so a bunch of them ran out with him and followed him to the scholarship area, I guess, and left us in this area with this, with this, um, with this, with this desk or whatever. And so then, um, see why we go and we sit down. So you got this, this kind of like a, um, or I think we go into another room or whatever. It's like a, they're, they're filling out applications or doing something in here where they're processing people. I don't know what it is. But you, you, we end up in this other room. Now, in this other room, when you come through the door, there's like a walkway where you can walk straight past everybody. But on the right-hand side, there's a bunch of um, uh, desks and computers and, you know, people working with pencils and paper and telephones and all of this office environment. But on the right-hand side, it's just regular old school desks. Where, you know, there's nothing really going on. It's, it's just school that They ain't got no computers. They ain't got no, no, uh, nothing. There's a few people there in this area on the right hand side. And then there's a bunch of people on, I mean, a few people on the left hand side with us just sitting in these school desks. But there's a bunch of people on the right hand side, you know, busy. They running around, like I said, they got computers. They're taking care of business. And so we're just sitting there waiting. Now, the whole time, like I said, I've been following your mom. Your mom has to leave. I'm following her around. She, she's leading here. It's, it's whatever we're there for is to do with her. They really ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just kind of tagging along as the husband or whatever. But we, we, um, we get in this. We, we're sitting in this, in this, in this desk, the school type area, and we're looking straight across at them with all of their computers and all of this stuff. They're handling their business. And we're kind of just sitting over here, kind of like waiting, kind of like the DMV, where you're kind of just waiting over here until they call your name or whatever. And in the meantime, your mom starts talking. She like goes into like this, this trance kind of thing, and she starts talking. Now, in reality, we are listening to the third testament of the Bible. It's playing in the background. And so your mom starts, that's, that's what's actually going on in real time. But in my dream, your mom starts quoting the third testament. And she's, she's actually just talking. And it's talking about uh, spiritualization. It's talking about what happens to the, the uh, Bible chapter that I said was, I forgot. Well, we're talking about um, what goes on, you know, after you, after you die, how your spirit interacts, whatever. Your mom's quoting the third testament. And the people around are completely amazed by what she's saying. The, the other people that's over here with us, they're amazed. The people that's behind the office with doing the work, they're amazed. Everybody's shocked. Whoa, wait, what is she saying? What is she saying? And so she's kind of been a trance. She's kind of, you know, she's kind of sitting there and she's kind of just talking. You know, um, well, when you're about, you're talking, she's quoting the third testament, what she's doing. And so when they come over, they're like, what is she talking? I say, well, she's talking about the third testament. And I say, and I ask them, I say, well, you know, I can show you, you know, what the document that she's reading that she's talking from. And they're like, well, we can't really let you use the computer. So I start, you know, trying to write down the app. They go to Jesus, jesuscomes.com and, and look at it there. They can't find it. They, they're looking around. I don't see it. But anyway, they're amazed by what she's saying. They're completely shocked. And they're, they're like, they want to get it. They're in love with what she's saying. They want to get it. They want to hear it. And they want to read it and all of this. And they, they can't really find it. I'm trying to tell them, you know, trying to give them the address so they can find it on their computer or whatever. And, um, um, and so... This goes on for a while. Like your mom's talking for a while, and they're all coming around. And so if there's a guy on the right side, on the left hand side, of, on the other side of your mom, over here on the left of her, I'm sitting on the right, and then there's another guy behind her. Now, mind you, the people on the elevator. One of the guys on the elevator. Um, I forgot when we got off the elevator. Your mom stepped off the elevator first, and she's kind of like she's holding the door, waiting for me to get off the elevator. But the other two guys, they walk off in front of me, and one of them kind of gives her the eye, kind of, kind of tries to you know wink at her or whatever. And now that we're in this room, this schooling room, this with these with these desks, you know, one of them, you know, they're, they're still trying to hit on your mom. They're making passes at her. Everybody's in love with your mom. The guys in love with her. The girls are looking at her like they're envious of her. Everybody's hearing her talk about these third testing. They all want to want to come and find out what she's talking about. But again, she's in a trance. So I'm telling her she's coming from the third testing now. Mind you, the guy that was sitting behind her, he was going a little too far. He was, he was like breathing down her neck and, you know, did it so I ended up punching him in his forehead or whatever. But then, then we go from this and we get on a, on a, um, we get on a train kind of thing. And we're, we're going down, we're, we're traveling on this train. Now, 
As we're going, as we're traveling on this train, it's going toward this mountainous area. It's like West Virginia type mountains. It was, you know, houses be up on the side of the mountain. And we're headed for this building that's sitting on this mountain. And, you know, we're, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the building. And, you know, we've been in a corporate, it's like a corporate type environment. You know, you know, and I've been in that, you know, type of environment all the time. It's kind of like, you know, like, like a job interview or something that your, that, that your mom is going to. And it's not me. I'm, I, I'm kind of familiar with it because I've been in that type of environment before, but it's not about me. It's about your mom. And so we go into the building. And I told your mom this dream earlier. And I couldn't remember what we were doing in the building, but it was something to do with medicine, something to do with, uh, uh, some type of man. There were some Caucasian people there that started giving us tours of the of the um, the facility there that was stuck inside of this mountain. It was on the side of the mountain, and we went up in the mountain and did a building or whatever. Like I said, I can't remember what we were doing in there, but it was something to do with medicine. And when they when they um when they escorted when it was when when it was giving us a tour outside, they brought us back down to where the train was, back down to where we came in, and they they was telling her how they were making making medicine. I think I think you know your mom was some, doing something, going there something to be a part of this big medical thing that they had going on. But when they opened up the box car. And showed us where they, they showed us where they were getting the medicine from, you know, like the source of the medicine, like what they were using to make the medicine. And it was all, it was these big, big, uh, big drums. They were about this big, about this tall. And it was kind of, you know, like they'd been in a train car a while. It was kind of, you know, but it was all food. I noticed pictures on it, like, like apricots or figs. They had pictures of figs on it, they had pictures of this on it. And so I, I was like, wait a minute, I thought we were getting, talking about medicine. So I, I focused in on it. And one of the things they had bananas. They had bananas on it. So they were using these fruits and vegetables to get medicine and make medicine out of it and that's why your mom was there to, to, to I don't know to help them or be a part of this organization but anyway everybody was enamored by your mom and all of this and that's about all I remember. It was 2018. Dang, you know, came a long way. Yeah so and again if you guys have any questions or well, if you want to finish out the hearing the dream you can go over to uh, my dream about my wife Stacy 39 views we Mm-hmm. View number 40 or something like that, 44 or whatever. Yeah, 2018, 39 views. That was pretty good for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah how many of them was me? <laughs> Probably 30. <laughs> yeah, so um, so I think that gives importance to your tea company. Now, I went back over here and started poking around for myself. Let me see. I, I went over here to Chrome and went to what was your... Uh, mm-hmm. um, homepage here or something like that we've gone through um this uh spirit and body what is this over here this uh, writing that we're yeah what on? it talks about is how the third testament talks about how our body is a tool that our spirit uses that our spirit rests in okay um so that you know that we and through this little writing right here we talked about the importance of keeping the body healthy so that the spirit can freely do its job. You know how it's very, uh, it's very hard when you are not well to, even if your spirit, you know, have, have the yearning to do things. Yeah. It's hard when your body is sick. You say, for instance, you have a headache, but you know that you want to get out there and, and help somebody and stuff like that. It's hard for you to actually do it. So that's important. It's important for us to keep our body healthy and, you know, keep our body well. So and the thing about it and the reason why I want to talk about it is because of the dream that I had, you know, okay. which means that this has something to do with not only yourself, but a bigger picture. I mean, that we, we went into detail when we start asking questions about that dream. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to do that here. Right. Right. But we did want to draw attention to the tea company because. You know, you, I see you have prices on stuff, but right. and but um, there's pe- things people could do to learn if they don't if they can't purchase stuff. Yeah, I think it's very important for people to actually, you know, I think it's even better to grow these things yourself. You know, most of these herbs are what people would call backyard herbs, uh, herbs that uh, when we moved onto the homestead, the father uh, graciously showed us over 50 different herbs that we had right here available on our land and that we you know, were mowing down with the yeah, lawnmower right and you know I'm sure that there are plenty of herbs that you guys yourself have within your homestead or within your ha- home or you know right outside of your apartment or you know your housing area uh, herbs that are freely there that the father has went ahead of us and planted already and these herbs are for uh, maintaining and improving our bodies right and that um what is that? And and a lot of these herbs, um, you say grow them. A lot of them are growing up like weeds. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh, pine needle apparently is um, having a an effect. I don't want to say positive or negative effect, but all of this pestilence that's going around, you know, even the scariest ones, um, can't stand up to the 
pine needle tea. Right. You know, there's uh, a lot of Do you of have research. a picture of that? Do you have a yeah, way to buy? Yeah, let's go on to the next page. Let's, go ahead. Okay, so let's scoot over to the next page. And we actually have um, fresh pine needles, uh, but we also have pine needle, uh, the dry pine needles as well, and both are equally... Uh, just as good yeah. but what they do uh, what we what we found out is that with the pine needles uh, oh, go ahead. they contain um, um, a um, agent that actually go in and actually listen this, this is what this is what it says it's the call I think it's shikimic acid and it's a possible anti antidote against the pestilence that we're facing today. Yeah, yeah. That's, so, uh, that's, yeah. that's good to know, guys, because these trees are growing. I ain't going to say everywhere. I don't know if they grow in Arizona. I think you sent some to Arizona. Right. Or mm -hmm. trying, trying to yeah, in that we'll package. Yeah, we'll get them out tomorrow, yeah. Um, but the, um, the rest of us over in the East Coast, I know we, we got pine trees everywhere. Yeah. And what do you do? Just... Yeah, you just take it, you uh, seep the tea, and you drink it. Well, you know, you wash it first, don't you? Yeah, you have to wash it. So you rinse it, it off, off the tree. Mm -hmm. Rinse it off. Then you wash the dust off of it, and then you put it in a pot of boiling water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and put and some honey in it. Yeah, you know, think about it, Coach, that the pine needles was possibly, I think, probably one of our first herbs that we actually started drinking. Well, yeah, and it was because, you know, necessity. I don't want to get off on a tangent, but it's funny because, you know, we, you're right. You want to tell a story of how we did that? Um, no, I don't. I don't actually well, remember. I just remember that it's one. It was one of our first ones. We didn't have any money to purchase tea, right? Mm -hmm. And we were, you know, there's only so much water you can. Yeah, drink. and we wanted tea, <laughs> you know, because we had been drinking tea, right? You know, we had weaned ourselves off of coffee too much and started drinking tea. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once the tea bags started running out, we was like, "What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do?" And I think you looked on the internet and found that you could drink. Pine needle pine tea. Pine needle tea, and we drank pine needle tea for how many years? Many years, and we said, uh, you know, we got a pot in there brewing now. Well, I mean, how how long was it that that's all we had was pine needle tea? I it mean, was it was a couple of years. Yeah, and then you and then you discovered you know other things. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So now we add mint to them to the tea and other things. Um, but well, we well we actually got out of the pine needle tea because we drank too much. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, we did. I did. I'm like, wait, yeah. what are you doing? I'm not doing it. Start look, looking red like a squirrel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this pine needle tea is actually great for the pestilence that we're facing today. It's uh, antiviral, antibacterial. It's an astringent. It's an antioxidant. And, you know, the father tells us that he will put the medicine in the trees, in the leaves. Yeah. And so... You know, yeah, that's what's important to understand is that, you know, these, these, this is where the medicine comes from, you know, and, and the doctors can can um, vouch for it that if it wasn't for our father putting this medicine in these trees and these plants and these herbs and all just about everything out there has some purpose and some good to it, mm -hmm. um, we'd be really, really lost way before now, way, mm -hmm. way before this latest pestilence that's coming out, um, we'd have been we'd have been gone. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I I say, you know, we have herbs for the common cold and different things like that. And if you don't need it need it now, you know, just have it. You know, go out in your yard and find these uh herbs, dry them and have them for, you know, the times that are to, are to come because, you know, I'm sure you you you're interested in talking about how you know, sooner or later, we're not going to be able to go to the stores and purchase these herbs. Yeah, no, the, 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 the stores, anything that you're relying on to go to the store, um, I don't know, you better, well, just, just the, I guess the only alternative plan is to get into uh, the scripture. And so with that reminds me, I guess that's what we kind of want to do next is get into uh, some scripture because... You had a question. I did have a question. Well, um, it's a question, question that I wanted to ask you about, and that is about um, the things that are fast coming up, approaching us. And, you know, I've watched your videos, and many others have also, but I don't have a clear understanding, you know, an everyday common, you know, talk to me like I'm a five-year-old mm -mm. uh, understanding of what's coming and what should I do 
Is there anything I can do? Is it too late? I'll need to know what's about to happen. Okay. All right. I understand now. Now, I believe the problem is in one of my latest videos. Let me let me jump over there and look at something. All right. Let me turn the images back on so you can see these. Um, guys, these images, there's a lot to these images. Avoid them at all costs. Any type of pictures, especially pictures of things that violate the second commandment so things that the father actually made yeah if he made it you um you can't take a picture of it if you made it it's good you can take a picture of it all day long yeah i believe the problem is in one of our latest videos this one right here um which says elijah and michael are coming right we did it in two parts where we kind of started off talking about one thing and then we we um uh, jump to another mm -hmm. yeah but if we actually jump to about um 10 minutes or so in the video we'll hear something like like this actually hmm actually i was working on this over here um this is um what we're working on for the great awakening um the big to do we're doing around uh january 12th right well let me just let you go ahead and just listen to it here and you can see what's going on right Okay. All right. You know, always let the, let the scripture prove itself, right? Mm -hmm. So we're here at using 1456 as our start point, the date that they crossed the River Jordan. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're coming ahead until we get to the current Jubilee. So we go 70 Jubilee years plus one Jubilee year. And then you have to add the one year for it being no BC zero. Right, exactly. So what that does is that take us to the year 2024. All right. So what the Messiah was saying was... That he's coming at or after 2024? And, well, actually during 2024. Because you, you're going from, he said, either... What Pentecost to Passover or Passover to Pentecost? Right, right. And there's some other hints, like for instance, you have this total solar eclipse that um, creates an X across America. Right. Say, that's actually a Tav across America. That's actually related to that 400-year prophecy that we see over in Genesis. Mm -hmm. It was talking to Abram, said he would be in a foreign land for 400 years. Then yeah. he's People will leave out with great substance. Right. Well, we understand that substance is the entire earth. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I guess you don't get no greater than that, huh? You get the whole planet. But anyway, let me bring you over to something other interesting I found. You know, mm -hmm. people like, you know, 2024 is a long way off. We can go back to sleep. Not worry about anything, you know, if that's when the day of the Lord is, right? Mm -hmm. If that's when he's coming back, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of clubbing and a whole lot of other stuff we can get done before then, right? Right. Well, we better be careful because when we look back at the story of Moses, mm -hmm. when the people were led out of Egypt, we see that Moses actually showed up two years ahead of time. Oh. Yeah. So if you think 2024, which would be the Jubilee year, right. and then you back up uh, one year, that will put you in the sabbatical year, which the, the Father told us to pray that our flight is not on the sabbatical, on the sabbatical year, mm -hmm. on the Sabbath day. Well... So you back up one more year, you have this time that we're in now. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look at the story of, you know, the exodus from Egypt, it's um, very similar. Even actually, people are calling what's going on now a modern day exodus. Yeah. Yeah. So if that be true, then we should take into account this two years here that occurred before the big event. Right. And then we have to wonder, okay, well, then who is this Moses character? Right. Why did Moses come two years earlier, and who will be our Moses that will come two years earlier this time? Mm -hmm. Well, this Moses, I believe, will be this Elijah, the prophet that we hear will be coming before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right. right. Yeah. So instead of Moses, a manly figure coming to help us, you know, help, he helped two million people. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know, he, he marched them two million people out there in that wilderness. But now we're talking seven billion. Right. Right. And for that our father is not sending a human, but he's sending a spirit of a man. Right. In the form of this Elijah. Yeah. yeah. You see him called Elijah here in chapter four, but when you back up to um chapter three it's called the covenant angel or something yeah. like that. Well, mm -hmm. What's important to note here is how you see up here in verse 4 how it is necessary for us to remember the law. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, matter of fact, go ahead and read this while we're here. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and the judgments. So he's talking about the commandments, he's talking about the statutes, he's talking about the judgments, he's mm -hmm. talking about Moses at Mount Horeb. Yeah. He's talking about the book of the covenant. Yeah. Which is Exodus chapter 20, chapter 21, chapter 22, chapter 23. What we're being told here is that we have to remember those laws and rules. Yeah. Obeying and doing them. Not just thinking about them, but actually doing them, not walking them. Then we can expect this Elijah figure to come back and help us. Mm -hmm. Now, that's neat because when we come back to Daniel chapter 12, we're also hearing about this covenant angel. Yeah. It's going by a different name there, Michael. Mm -hmm. Or Michael. Get it? Yeah. So this individual we find out is going to stand up here in these end times, um, which is, you know, almost exactly where we're hearing over there in Malachi, um, standing up for those who keep the covenant and those whose names is written in the book. Right. Yeah. Well, the thing about this is when we come down to the end, we find out that the exact day this is supposed to occur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, we put together this um, little document that shows how we can come up with the exact date. Yeah. 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 Starting with um, Daniel chapter twelve, of course, but then it's going to take you all over the place. You got to go to Daniel chapter one. To right. You have to go to Ezekiel twenty-four to find out the exact day. Now, he tells us the exact day mm -hmm. in Ezekiel twenty-four and one, and you add that up together, you find out that it's the tenth month and the tenth day of the month. Right. And then adding what Daniel said about the 1,290 years and the 1,335 years, you end up with the day, January the 13th of the year 2022. Yeah. That's the fast of the 10th month in the year 2022. Right. Right. So this could very well be the day that this Elijah figure comes. Yeah. Yeah. Right on it. Right, right on time. Right. Yeah, it's right there alone. I mean, everything seems to be lining up. Yeah. Right? So you have this event in 2022, sometime in 2022. I'm not going to say uh, January the 13th, you know, because, you know, it could be that precise or it could not be, you know. Yeah. Um, but what, so what we're expecting, though, is this Elijah figure to stand up for us, this Michael figure to come, you know, visit us, so yeah. to speak, um, sometime around this year. And give us aid. Give us aid, like you said, before the coming day of the Lord. Right. Right. To basically instruct and encourage us on what it is that we're supposed to do to survive this thing. Right. And then two years later, during the Jubilee year, is, you know, um, when it all goes down. Yeah. Yeah. And you remember the story of Joshua out there when he was walking around um, um, the walls of Jericho yeah. for seven days blowing the trumpets. Yeah. And that was actually in a jubilee year. So that's what we're talking about, the fall, the wall, the, the walls about the fall. Yeah, yeah so. definitely. Uh -huh. I thought it was your turn to talk. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So I think that answers a few questions for me. Um, one, the question about uh, January 13th. Mm -hmm. um, about, you know, you talked about Elijah um, being the forerunner. He's the forerunner. And about Michael. Um, and these giving us instructions. You know, I think one of the th things that's being confused, that's confusing us, is that we are, you know, when you're unaware, when you don't know when something's about to happen, you don't, you, nobody's ever been through this. And so you have your own thoughts and then you have thoughts from other people. And I think we're fearful. We don't know. And we're having thoughts that we've never had before. Like, are we about to die? We're falling back onto our church thoughts. Are we about to leave this planet? You know? So I think the answer to your question uh, to our question as far as January 13th is we're about to receive, start receiving, and you tell me if I'm right or not, spiritual information, uh, spiritual instructions as to what we're about to do next. Is that, is that something like that? Is it oh, like that? Well, let me, let's just go on to the next slide. Cause we're going to get over here into, um, 
Well, let's let our guys from Bible Project help us out just oh, yeah. a little bit. Okay. Okay, because um, just to give you an idea of what the plan is. Okay. So you're, you're, you're wanting me to give you the, the specifics, right? Mm-hmm. Like the details, sounds like, when you don't really understand the big picture yet. Now, when you understand the big picture, then I believe you'll be able to understand the smaller details. Okay. I believe a lot of the questions will either be answered or go away or they'll at least be clarified. Okay. okay. So let's, let's, let's go on. In this one, we're going to hear from Bible Project. Um, you guys can uh, look for Bible Project and look for their uh, video called Temple. So that's what we're talking about, the fall, the wall, the, the walls about the fall. Yeah, so. definitely. If you could go back to the city of Jerusalem during Bible times, the biggest thing you'd see is the temple. This beautiful building was designed by King David and built by King Solomon, and they believed that it was the home of the God of the universe. Wait, I thought God's home was in heaven. Well, the whole point of this earthly temple is that it's the place that overlaps with God's heavenly home. The temple is where God lives and rules all creation as king. That's cool, but even Solomon, who built the temple, didn't believe that it could contain the God of the universe, right? Yeah, the building was just a symbol, and it pointed to the fact that all of creation is God's temple. And that's actually what the first page of the Bible, Genesis 1, is all about. Really? It says that creation is God's temple? Well, it doesn't need to say it. The whole story shows it. In Genesis 1, God creates an ordered world out of a dark wasteland by speaking in a series of seven days. Then on the seventh day, God's presence fills creation as he takes up his rest and rule. Similarly, the tabernacle and later the temple were built and dedicated in a series of seven speeches in seven days, after which the priest or king could rest and rule in God's presence. Ah, so all of creation is where God intends to dwell. It's like his temple. Exactly. Now, turn the page to Genesis 2 and we get another portrait of creation. This one focuses in on the land. And in the center of the land is a region called Eden, which in Hebrew means delight. And in the middle of delight, God plants a garden in which God and humanity live together. And that's why the temple was modeled after the garden, filled with imagery of gold and flowers. The menorah symbolized the tree of life. It's the place where God dwells with his people. Oh, got it. And check this out. In the temple, the Israelite priests and Levites were to work and to keep the temple in God's presence. This is exactly the job description given to humanity in the Garden of Eden. So these humans were the first priests. But instead of ruling with God, they wanted to rule on their own terms, and they're exiled from the Garden Temple. And like Adam and Eve, Israel's leaders also wanted to rule on their own terms, and they too were exiled. The temple was destroyed, and this left them wondering, did God give up on Israel? Will God bring about a new creation? Well, the biblical prophets anticipated the day when God would create a new temple with a new priesthood. That's when God's presence would fill all of creation. And when the Israelites returned to the land, they did rebuild the temple. But that temple didn't turn out the way the prophets hoped. In fact, later Israelite prophets said that this temple was hopelessly corrupt. So they're still waiting for the ultimate temple. And here we come to the story of Jesus. He said that through him, God's presence and rule was coming into our world in a new way. And he presented himself as a new kind of priest. But Jesus wasn't a priest, and he didn't work in the temple. Right. Jesus said that God's presence, his rest and rule, was filling the world through his own life, death, and resurrection. Jesus was claiming that he was the true temple, and this new temple would expand out to include all of creation. That's a really big claim. And it got even bigger. After his resurrection, Jesus said that God's presence would come to dwell in and among his followers so that they would become mini temples. Communities of people where God rests and rules. Exactly. This is the Bible's vision of the church, which is described as a temple. Not a building, but people. Yeah, like when Peter says, you all are living stones built up as a temple for God's spirit to dwell. So 
At the end of the story, do we ever get a new physical temple? Well, not exactly. What we see is a renewed cosmic temple, just like Genesis 1. And this new creation doesn't need a temple building because through Jesus, all creation is now the place where God rests and rules the world with his people. Ignoring the voice of the Father. All right, so you're listening to the next clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I was trying to get it back to this very point right here. Let me zoom in a little bit, see if I can get it. It's somewhere around here, right? Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. There. That's what's about to happen. So the spirit of 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 God, I'm gonna use that word. The spirit of God is going to, and these are wrong words to use, but or fall down on all of us as we become the smaller temples for Him. Is yeah. that what it's saying? And it yeah, that. But what's actually happening is what people call. I only do because I'm you know just getting into you know how people use words. But they call it the Shekinah glory. It's okay. about to come down. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who goes by the name of Dirac Ibar or Dirac Ibar, and he and I were having a conversation. Um, he brought up uh, 312 mm -hmm. and, you know, the times, time and half a time prophecy. And as we were going back and forth um, with that, what it turned out is that if you start at Adam, and I'm doing this from memory, so you guys bear with me. Um, it'll be in a future video, believe me. But if you start off with Adam and go 490 years, you end up in Enoch, which is time of the fallen angels. And then if you go another 490 years, you end up in Noah, which is the time of the flood. And if you go, or, or um, well, I don't know what was right there with Noah because Noah in himself was a big deal. But Shem comes after that. You go 490 years, you're in the lifetime of Shem. You go 490 years after that, I believe you're in Abraham. And 490 years after that, you're in Solomon. 400 years after that, then you're in Daniel. Guess what? They call him the robber bell. But he's actually Ezra, Nehemiah. All of them are the same guy. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So so you're in that life with him. Yeah, I know that he's he was a really old dude. Right? But so... Zerubbabel Bell comes, and then 490 years after that, you get Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then there, there, there's a break in the cycle because of the 2,000 years, right? right? The, the, the last week. And so here we are at the end of this last week. And so we are now once again expecting this thing, like I said, they call it the Shekinah glory. Mm -hmm. What it turns out is our universal mother is descending on earth. The Holy spiritual. Spirit. Yeah, it's come exactly. Mm -hmm. coming down upon us mm -hmm. once again except the difference is this time is permanent that makes sense so i'm wondering why didn't you just say that in the first place <laughs> well because we've said it before <laughs> we've been saying this the whole time matter of fact you said it too my fact that's why i'm gonna bring you over here to this video okay. right here to show you that even you said it okay all right so let's let's come over here and let's hear your own voice talk on this subject okay all creation is now the place where God rests and rules the world with his people. What you're doing is you're ignoring the voice of the Father. You actually because are, yeah. The Third Testament tells us that when we are born, the Father gives us uh, one of many, but he gives us free will and he also gives us the gift of the conscience. And so it's there and it's been there all this time. Like we said, we just haven't been, we haven't been developed enough to hear it. But it's amazing. And you just said how they never taught us that that was the voice of God. Yeah. And we have been going through life saying, you know, something's telling me that I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And that was the voice of the Father telling us. And we just, we blew it off as something told me that yeah. or, or whatever. And that's just, that's, that's amazing that we have had his voice Teaching with us, us and guiding yeah, us, guiding us this entire time. And we just ignored it. But there's a time, as you said, that the, this voice is going to be so strong that we're not going to be able to ignore it. But that brings me to another point that I wanted to make is... We, you know, the, sometimes the scripture talks about uh, denying the Christ, 
-hmm. and it talks about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Right. Well, that is what we have to look forward to after we go through this change, after humanity is changed in this way and our conscience becomes dominant to where we can actually hear it forcefully directing us, telling us not to do this, telling us not to do that. We're actually going to hear this almost in an audible tone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be dominant. It's going to be, you know, something, something. Let me, fact, let me jump over here and show you this verse coming out of uh, chapter 55, verse 29. It says, but the hour of the conscience approaches. It is the same as if you would say that the day of the Lord or his judgment is about to take place. Then shame will rise in some and remorse in others. Now, we know we could spend all day on this verse right here. This is what's talked about over there in the book of Daniel and chapter 12, starting what I think at verse 1. Um, it's what we looked at over there in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5, I think it was. Um, I think we're going to jump over there and look at it in um, Revelations in chapter 8. But you see here, it's talking about the hour of the conscious. This is what we've been talking about all day. When we're talking about this change that humanity is about to go through, where we're going to be able to hear our consciences again. But look how it's talking right here. It says, and it is the same as if you would say that the day of the Lord or his judgment is about to take place. This, this right here is going to be a huge deal. It's actually, let matter of fact, let me go over and show you in the book of Revelations, because it actually appears that the, the, um, the hour of the conscious, this new covenant that we're talking about here, the great awakening as we refer to it, actually starts the tribulation. When you're looking at here, like you're looking at chapters, we're looking at the book of Revelation, you look at chapter 7, it's talking about the ceiling of the 144,000. Then when you look at chapter 8, it's talking about... Um, the how the set the, the angels with the seven trumpets are about to blow. You see there in verse two, you know, they have their trumpets, but they're not blowing. And then when you see right there in verse three, verse four, verse five, there seems to be this altar or this um this ceremony, this holy convocation is going on here as if, you know, our our cre our Messiah is taking his uh, responsibilities as the high priest and he's doing some type of atonement day ceremony here then the angels start to blow so it's like when you read this and you read in other places it seems as though this hour of the conscious which you know we see the connection between the day of the lord is actually going to start the tribulation this new covenant this new covenant is going to start the tribulation and see from what all i've gathered out of this, and I'm gonna have to start speculating a little bit here. So humanity goes through this change. We can hear this voice coming from within us now. Everybody, you know, hears it to some levels. To some people, it'll be small. Some people, it'll be greater. Some people will be, you know. But the thing is, it'll be in there, and it'll be, and it'll be trying to tell us the difference between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. But the municipalities and the governments are going to be, for some reason, the new world order who will be highly threatened by this new king that's trying to take over. Right. They want to maintain their own sovereignty, and they don't want anybody coming in and intruding on that. However, it is our father's plan that he's going to be our king one day. Mm -hmm. And here we have his voice, who we can all now hear. You have these new, you have the new world order guys who are trying to hold on to their power, trying to make people deny and say that they don't hear that voice anymore. So that's what you hear about in the scripture when it says, if you sh if you deny Christ, he will deny you. <laughs> but once this conscience becomes dominant and you're hearing that voice, it's not going to be deniable. It's not going to, you're going to, you're not going to be able to deny it. Mm -hmm. But there are going to be some that do because they want to be part of the new world order or because they feel threatened or for one reason or another, they're going to stand up and they're going to say, no, I don't hear nothing. Or no, I, 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 that was just some voices I heard in my head, but they're gone now. Or no, I don't know what you're talking about. Or that was some aliens that was talking to me. Or no, that was Project Blue Beam. Or that was this new 5G technology that's, that's you know coming across and it's actually messing with me. It, I, it ain't God that I hear there. It's not the Father that I hear there. It's this 5G technology. And so then they're going to deny the Holy Spirit in them. And, of course, they're going to be the ones that's left out in the cold when it's time for protections. Yeah, denying or refusing to acknowledge that 
that is the voice of the Father speaking to them. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Y'all might not be ready for the next one yet. We need a little bit more introduction. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. The hour of the conscious. You know, when you break it down to to that, it makes total sense. It's um, I totally agree because I'm gonna tell you the truth, Coach. I was like, okay, I don't know what he's talking about. You know, it's not making sense to me. But when you, you know, when you talk in Oh my goodness, I hate to, you know, simple, let's just say it, simple form and talk about the hour of the conscious. I totally agree. It makes sense. And, you know, I think, you know, let's all get ready for it. Yeah. Well, you ain't, we ain't done yet. You ready to go? You got something else to do? <laughs> no. I have a little it's bit just, more. you know, my question is answered. <laughs> no, we ain't finished answering your question because that was all you've gotten is the big picture. You, you wanted to know what's going to happen to you specifically. Oh, come on, man. You didn't pay for this. We got to, you know, we ain't going to get no refunds. <laughs> she yawning and everything. We're going to put her uh, to sleep on this one. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I I think I understand because I, I say that because, you know, I've done a few studies on the conscious. So, but I'm I'm interested. I'm interested in seeing. Well, what you're talking about. Um, hold on. All right, y'all. Before we roll this, let me say what you're going to be seeing on the screen is um, the text from the Third Testament of the Bible. But um, you can read. If you don't like the music, guys, um, just turn it down and read what's on the screen. It should be slow enough that, you know, some of y'all could keep up. I ain't going to say I could keep up, but maybe if it wasn't for that, you know, booming music in the back, you know, I wouldn't be so distracted. I'd be actually be able to read a little faster. So you can just turn it down. But um, just make sure you turn it back up when we change the screen. Else, um, might You're fall Mr. asleep. Ray. You're Mr. Ray you Ray might Ray. fall asleep because this is a, a lyricist. This ain't a rapper or yeah. hip-hop artist. This is a lyricist, and they tend to... Their lyrics tend to be so complicated that if you think about it too much, it'll mentally um, put your mental fatigue. You may need a nap. Hmm. I told him that the other day. I said, man, if it wasn't for the beats and the uh, the um, the rhyme skills, none of us would even be able to pay attention too much to what you're doing. We all need a nap. Hmm. But anyway, let's go on. This is Direct Ibar on his song called The Great Awakening. Ah, yeah. It's called The Great Awakening. Produced by the Little Boy Beats. You can find on his channel. Right right gotta be picking, get a house in order. Who gon' make it in? Who gon' endure to the end? Got the sword on me and these scriptures lock and loaded. Ain't no stopping, we on it. Uh, tell the nations to repent. The Messiah is coming. We the voice in the wilderness. I can be at the end. Sword on me and these scriptures lock and loaded. Ain't no stopping, we on it. Great awakening. Before I get started, glory to Abba. Watchmen, blow the trumpet, no division. We the body, now rise up and endure. We ain't slaves no more. Big yokes off of our neck, but this ain't the land of our rest. Zion. I just pray we make it to your holy mountain. The prophet spoke about it. I'm a God of plan and they can't override it. Look up, your redemption draws nigh. We almost out of time. Who gon' wake them up? This the great awakening. Gotta be picking, get our house in order. Who gon' make it in? Who gon' endure to the end? Got the sword on me. Scriptures lock and loaded, ain't no stopping, we on it. Uh, tell the nations to repent, the Messiah is coming, we the voice in the wilderness. I be we at the end, sword on me, and these scriptures lock and loaded, ain't no stopping, we on it. Great awakening. I'm not ashamed of this power in his name. It's only by the blood, he gave his life for us, they held him to the cross. They thought it was over, but he was raised up. Day he gon' come, who gon' wake him up, the jig is up, if the father is with us, we gon' win, what can they take from us, set apart, I'm not attached to nothing material, if it's for the gospel's sake, I will give it all back, we strive for a crown, it's incorruptible, when the savior come for you, keep all in your lamp, stay repentant, do the work, don't get comfortable, time is short and many don't know what
got to do. We gon' wake them up. This is a great awakening. Gotta repent and get our house in order. Who gon' make it in? Who gon' endure to the end? Got the sword on me and these scriptures lock and loaded. Ain't no stopping, we on it. Uh, tell the nations to repent. The Messiah is coming. We the voice in the wilderness. I keep we at the end. Sword on me and these scriptures lock and loaded. Ain't no stopping, we on it. Great awakening. Yeah. It's a... There you have it. You have um, actually music to your ears. Yeah. And what he's actually talking about is the dead being raised. Right. The great awakening. You hear mm -hmm. about it, you know, all over the scripture that the dead going to rise. Right. You know, we're all like, we're all either a Lazarus. We're all like a Lazarus. And, you know, yeah. a lot of us have been. One of the ways that you guys are going to know that you are and are being, that you're experiencing this is through your dreams. Mm -hmm. You start having a lot of dreams and these dreams have, um, significant meaning, you know, you ain't just eat, dreaming about eating a fat bologna sandwich or something. You know? <laughs> bologna. <laughs> that might have significance too, you know. Yeah. Especially bologna. if you have a lot of them. But anyway. Um, yeah. um So, what do you think about that song? I really like that song. Um, you know, I often say that I'm not a person who enjoys rap music, but I do understand why you're saying he's more of a lyricist. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Than a. Um, there's a, there's a message. Anyway, well, you know, so so you think it's making sense now? Yeah, I think I where I was at a ten, I'm probably at an eighty. Now. So you so you think you can explain it to somebody? I think I can now. You know, you got keywords like um, the hour of the conscious, uh, the dead in Christ will rise, um, the rising of Lazarus. Uh, Keywords like that, which totally make it make sense to me. Okay, so you want to you want to take a shot at explaining it to the world, or? Um, I think what's uh, about to occur um, in this time is where we will all those who are I'm going to say under the law mm -hmm. or within the law mm -hmm. are about to experience uh, the. Shekinah glory mm -hmm. of the Father, the Holy Spirit, uh, having a deeper, louder voice within ourselves, um, an overwhelming voice within us uh, telling us the right directions to go, instructing us on how we are are supposed to uh, walk, continue to walk this walk within the Father's will. If that makes sense, is that I don't know. Is that is that? What you know, know I'm not that? going to argue with your explanation because I'm going to give my explanation, okay. and I I don't want you to argue with mine either. So okay. you do me a favor, I do you a favor. You didn't heard this before. Okay. All right, now, a lot of you guys have heard of this before. I did just now change the name of the video to include this uh, January 13th because I actually believe this is what we're all about to go through, January okay. 13th. Mm -hmm. So let's let's click on it and see what it says. Um, we put this video out. Does it say there when is No, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, right there, June the 20th of 2020. Right. But this experience has actually happened years before. Right. Years and maybe two or three years before. Um, I want you guys to note that, you know, I'm not really crazy. I was standing in the grass um, when I was shooting the video, so I wasn't actually in the road. My shadow was in the road. My feet were in the grass. It was off the road, even off the little margin area. Mm -hmm. uh, just wasn't much margin area. And the other thing that I want you guys to know is this is actually the day I got COVID, huh? Yeah, it's actually the day I, I got. I didn't know it at the time when I was recording the video. I didn't find out the after. You guys can find that COVID video on my channel if you want to. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what it hit. Oh, another thing here is um, be sure to check the sub. Listen, put. Uh, yeah, I'm coaching the fight here. Read the subtitles. I had nothing to do with these subtitles. But this one here, somebody's took the liberty of editing the subtitles, so I'm gonna turn those on so you guys can see these hey y'all coach in the fight here 
got a bit of a unique message for you guys. It's something um, I've been thinking about, thinking about sharing with you, you guys here lately. Um, you're looking at Shadow Man. Um, anyway, it's talking about the rapture. I guess I'll go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I, I, I believe, and I hesitate to say this because I know how crazy it sounds. You know what I mean? But I know I'm not crazy. You know, at least I think I'm not. But this experience that I'm about to tell you about is extremely unique. I haven't heard anybody else say anything like this. Um, I've heard some people try to explain what it was as I've told this story once or twice before. Um, but now we're in this way. Um, not like this. Um, standing out here in the road, so when you hear cars go by, you'll hear me get a little bit nervous, because I am actually in the road <clears throat> right now. Anyway, um, I think I've been raptured. I think, I think, I think I've actually been raptured now. A lot of people going to immediately go and want to click off, because they're like, well, how has he been raptured and he's still standing there? Well, give me a chance to hear me out. You know what I mean? You you don't know what the rapture is. Nobody really knows what it is. No nobody has actually experienced it. Here come a car coming the other way. Oh shit, make a move. I'm gonna make a move. I'm gonna stand right here. Thing is, I think he was looking at his phone, and he actually almost ran me over. <laughs> almost got raptured again. <laughs> oh, this ain't funny. <clears throat> I don't know if I should end it. <laughs> I'm serious. I thought he was trying to be funny and was uh, right in the in the weeds. I thought it was somebody I knew that was trying to be funny, ran in my weeds, but in the weeds on my side of the road. I'm actually standing on his side of the road, but I expected him to cross over and get on the other side of the road. See him, he's standing here, and then when I looked at him, he was actually in the weeds on my side of the road. Look at my dog. Geez. Enough! And, um, we got a lot going on. My wife's grandmother is not doing too well at all. You pray for her. Um, her name is Julene. But I'm getting on with it anyway. Almost just got ran over. Um, and I can hear my wife up there talking about her mom. She seems a little agitated. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this over with. I think I think um, I think I've been raptured. I think I've actually experienced the rapture. Um, now there are several definitions to the word rapture. Um, the one you may be thinking about is the the uh, modern definition of the word where uh, people are supernaturally removed from the planet before the tribulation occurs. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm actually talking about is the dictionary definition of the word where our spirits are evolved to a higher state of awareness. Our spirits are evolved to a higher state of awareness. I believe that has happened to me um, twice, actually. And let me go ahead and tell you um, the two instances in which I believe they happened. Okay, the first time, um, I was doing a favor for a friend. A, a friend needed me to help them to um, move their car. They had just purchased a car and they needed the car to be towed in. And so, um, and let me go ahead and cover this thing up. So I'm not worrying about it. All right, so, <clears throat> so he needed the car to be towed in. And um, I offered to put the car on my trailer and carry it in. I, I could have borrowed a trailer and carried the car in like you're supposed to, but him and another guy who is now deceased 
um, recently passed away, it was those two guys who had thought up this idea that we were actually going to use chains and we were going to haul the car in using a chain. Um, and so, um, so that's what we did. We went to the, to the, and we chained the cars up and we were uh, transporting the cars, towing them using my Suburban. We were towing this other vehicle with a chain and we had to tow this vehicle about 35 miles, I think, I think it was. And as we were towing this vehicle, there, there's another um, video that I've pasted on, that I've posted on this so you guys can see that other one. It may give some more detail on the story because it's been a long time, maybe two, maybe three years now. And um, I was towing the vehicle and I was afraid, I will, at one point I was afraid I was going to lose control of the vehicle. Um, I was driving pretty fast to be towing a vehicle in that manner. I was driving a um, big hefty Suburban, so it didn't feel like much weight back there at all to me. And um, so I was doing 35, 40 miles per hour towing this vehicle. But there was at one point when I thought I almost was about to lose control of the vehicle. What I thought, what I felt like was is that I was going to crash. And my friend that was that I was towing in the back, you know, in the back, he was in the back there with the chain. I thought that I was going to kill him. I thought that, you know, I was going to lose control of both of those vehicles and he was going to end up dead. Maybe both of us was going to end up dead or I was going to end up hurt. But I was pretty sure that, you know, it was going to be a very, very bad situation and a life changing situation. You know, as I'm sitting there having to explain to the police officers how I have now killed this guy in this car. And so um, it was. Um, I was very scared. I was very, very, very scared in that instant. It was a short period of time when, you know, I felt like I was losing control of the vehicle and I started praying uh, and I asked the father in, in my prayers, I asked the father to take complete control of the situation. I told him I needed him to take control of my body, my hands, the steering wheel, the truck both trucks, everything, I needed for him to take control right then because I was afraid that, you know, I was about to die and I was about to kill my friend or whatever. And so it happened. It happened. And in those moments, um, I felt the strangest thing that I have ever experienced in my life and the strangest thing that I have ever heard anybody ever try to explain. Now, this has nothing to do with a dream or anything. I was wide awake. And I, what it felt like was that, okay, it felt like in that moment that something moved inside of me. I felt like something came inside of my body. Not a physical something. It's like a spiritual something came inside of my body. It moved inside of my body. I'm stressing that what I'm because I want that to sink in that it felt like something moved inside of me. But check this out. Check this out. When this being came inside of me, it's like I could communicate with this being. It's like we were having a communication. It was like we were talking. Like I said, this is this this has happened to me twice. So let me go ahead and mix up both instances because the second time it it was similar, but it was different. But let me let me let me uh, for the sake of getting you to understand, let me combine both of those experience together so that it would make sense. It was like I was communicating with this being that had moved inside of me. This being knew everything about everything. It knew about my family. It knew about my neighbors. It knew, and I, and I mean, it really knew about them. And it showed me these individuals, like the pastor of the church and the assistant pastor of the church. And there's some of the other neighbors that were doing certain things around me at the time. It, this being, this spiritual being that moved inside of me showed me who they were and why they were doing this on a spiritual level. It was a revelation as to why all of this stuff was going on. And um, he, 
He, he just basically knew everything about everything. In the second instance, that was the first instance where he explained everything to me, all of these people to me. He explained people to me in the first instance. In the second instance, and I know this is a bit confusing because I'm melding them together to make you understand the experience. In the second experience, it wasn't so much as about people. It was about my land. I live on a homestead. And, you know, I don't understand, you know, I didn't grow up on homesteads. I grew up in kind of an urban type environment. And so all of this is new. And so when this being came into me, he, he um, communicating again, basically let me know that he understood everything about everything that I was experiencing and everything that was going on with my land. And he was telling me and making me feel like he was here to help me with my land. He knew everything about what was going on with my land, even the future and how things were going to play out with my land. And he was here in order to help me to do it right. He made me feel like everything that was in control. It was only for a brief moment. But in that brief moment, I felt like everything was going to be all right. Everything was in complete control. This, this individual has showed up and now everything is going to be all right. That was in the second in instance. In the first instance, I had the same feeling. He explained who these people were. These people were giving me trouble. But after he has shown me who they were and why they were doing all of that, you know, it made sense to me and put me in a position where I didn't feel like I had to be concerned about what these people were doing anymore in my life because everything was going to be perfectly fine. Everything was within the Father's will. Everything was going to be straightened out. But look... Now, here's where it gets crazy. Here's where it gets crazy. Like I said, this individual came inside of me. It moved inside of me. So you have me here, the individual who is driving the truck. Got my hands on the wheel, driving the truck. And this other individual who is just showed up and moved in with me but the thing is i felt like the person who moved inside of me was the real me it felt like that was the real me that had moved in it's it's really really odd to try to explain it's even odd to think about it was like i moved into myself that's why I say a higher state of awareness, because it was like my spirit man came to life inside of me. This spirit man that has eternal life, that is more angelic than it is human. That's what a spirit means. But it, I could, it, I could feel both entities. I could feel. The me that I've been with for 40 years, and I could feel the me that had been there for about 40 seconds. But the me that had moved in felt like the real me. It felt like the true me. That's the me that I associated with. The other me that was actually driving the truck and crying out for help and all of this kind of stuff was like another person. It was like I was talking to another person. It was like I was this. I mean, it's, it's, it's I don't, I don't want to use crazy because, you know, I'm talking about divine things and I don't like using that word. It was, I'm going to say, just like the definition says, the first definition, like I said, there's many different, there's at least three different definitions of the word rapture, but it was an overwhelming feeling of being caught away in emotion overwhelmingly caught away in emotion. I mean, I, I believe that I have been raptured. I believe this. I believe, and that's like I said, this has happened two times. Two times that this has happened to me. Um, both times I was doing something to help somebody out. I was, um, so that was a charitable deed. Both times I had been reading the word. Uh, very intently, very strongly reading the Bible, and both times I was in an hour of need, and both times this being came 
inside of me. And both times, it was an overwhelming, um, caught away moment in, in, in emotion, caught away emotionally. And it was like a spiritual evolution. Like I, my spirit had been evolved into a higher level of awareness both times. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, I mean, you, you guys can jump down there in the comment section and tell me what you think about it. But you know, I, I'm saying this because you know, I believe, I believe, I believe this. I believe I've been raptured. You know, I'm back down here with regular people now, and it haven't happened since. You know, but you know, I believe I've had a taste of what it is that we all have coming i believe i've been shown what the rapture was what it is you know all right well i ain't got nothing else to say uh y'all pray for me Shalom. all right so what do you think about that i think that could very well be tr um could i think that that could very well happen well, the thing is, I've, I've had one other person to come on. She um, may not want me to show her information, but when I first put this video out back in 2020, somebody responded and you know, a lot of people responded, but one person responded with a similar um, thing. And then this time when I put, posted it on my channel, posted it up for them to look at the old video, somebody again came in now out of 20 people maybe one person actually described a similar event that they happened in their life mm -hmm. and they it said it that it happened to them when they were in one of those multiple car collisions you know right. like they'd be on the interstate and yeah. they'd be slide on ice and everybody mm -hmm. but he said that you know at first they thought they were going to die but they did a similar thing that i did where they asked for complete control mm -hmm. and he said they the, they received complete control over themselves, the car, to the point where they knew that they weren't even going to even crash. Right. And, you know, they not only did they not crash, but they they said they knew it. You know, closed their eyes and, you know, took care of everything. They said the only difference between their experience and mine was they didn't tell them anything. Right. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, you think that's what, what could happen to us? I think it very well um, could be. Well, it's getting real serious. Yeah. This is all getting real serious. Yeah. yeah so. Everybody, um, a lot of people are becoming awake. A lot of people are coming together. Uh, and, you know, I think we're in that time. That, well, speaking of that time, it brings me to another uh, video. Now, I did have one thing I wanted to point out earlier. You mentioned um, people within the law will be protected or something like that. I can't remember exactly yeah. what you said. But I wanted mm -hmm. to um, bring it up that also people are doing charitable deeds. Okay. Yeah. You have to do charity charitable because acts. it's all about love it's all about love love right. for the father love for the, the law the that's mm -hmm. what it means when he said you know the father gave us two ten two commandments it's not really true somehow some people take that out of context but if you really want to know what the two commandments are just like he said is love for him you know which means obedient to the law mm -hmm. and then it's love for our brother right. which of course means doing charitable deeds not just saying yeah i love everybody right yeah now mm -hmm. show it you gotta prove it yeah and that's mm -hmm. what's going to be now we're into a time of show and prove. Yeah, he right. says in the Third Testament, if you want to show him your love, love your brother. Stand up right in the face of evil. It's that time. It's midnight. Look, 5,994. I tell him board the ark before he locked the doors. Light versus darkness, this the final war. It's too late to be playing. I keep time is short. If we don't say it, who gon' warn them? Turn it from commandments, that's what scattered us to corners. Everywhere we go. The covenant we made is gonna follow us and it's gonna be a curse if our sins keep piling up. That's facts. The four corners is our address. All over the earth while the land rests. We was worshiping idols, disobeying laws. Just know them same laws gonna break the chains off. 
so this what we gon' do. Point the people to the shepherd, he gon' heal the nation. Sun, moon, and stars, feet in they proper places. If we follow him, we gon' survive this tribulation. It's a narrow path, everybody ain't gon' make it. I ain't saying I will, I but don't play favorites. No respect to persons, I don't do it. He got several servants. Tell him watch your back, stay on point. These devils lurking, who is that man? Will he hear? With a message for the seven churches. Was he the man on the river back in Daniel 12? Nebuchadnezzar threw three men inside the flame. They looked in and saw another man standing there. The Holy One, the seed of David. Break free, flee the matrix. Repent and be baptized, I'ma keep it basic. Written in stone, they'll never erase it. We that generation. Thank you.